Okay, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Can everyone hear me okay? Um, Emily, are you here? Yes. Hi, nice to meet Hi. you. She is from Cornell Law School and she's going to be uh, speaking on behalf of the admissions team from Cornell Law. We also have this uh, event recorded. We had a lot of students who were taking midterms still and finishing up things so they weren't able to make it. Um, so this event will be recorded for other students to look back on. Uh, so I just wanted to welcome everyone. And Emily, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit about you, where you're from, maybe what type of law you're interested in, what you're studying at, at Cornell Law? Sure. Um, so I'm Emily Rivera. Um, I'm a 2L right now at Cornell. I'm originally from Miami Beach, Florida. Um, I graduated in 2016 from undergrad. And then I worked for a couple of years before um, coming here to Cornell, so about four years. Um, and then in between that time, I worked at Legal Aid um, in Hawaii. I was doing family and immigration law. Um, then I went to China for a year because I studied in, in China in undergrad. And then I was working at a firm in DC, so it's kind of like everywhere. Um, but yeah, so at Cornell, let's see. I'm the president of the Latin American Law Student Association. I'm a diversity officer for the Women's Law Coalition. Um, I'm like a representative for a lot of organizations. Like I'm part of like the first generation um, student association, uh, the Women of Color Collective, it's like a lot. Um, and then I'm also the co-director of the uh, International Refugee Assistance Project. Um, and then, Last summer, my first summer, I interned for a judge in DC and I want to go back to DC actually. So that's why I was going back there this summer. Um, and then I will be returning in the summer to DC. I'll be working at Latham and Watkins. Um, it's a firm in DC, also in California, also like in a lot of places, but um, I'll be in DC. And yeah, so in terms of what kind of law, I think um, I'm leaning towards, well, it'll be litigation. And then in terms of like what within litigation is still up in the air. Um, I have done like work in trade, like international trade work, and then also uh, white collars, like a lot of the people I had interviewed with, but we'll see um, where I end up. So that was a mouthful, but that's me. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, it really does give a breath of, of what you are doing and specifically why you're partnering with us, which we're really thankful for. Uh, at Latinos in Law, we're a student organization on Berkeley looking to provide a professional outlet for students who are interested in going into the field of law, not just for law school, but maybe graduate uh, school and then maybe uh, other steps. Uh, so we're just kind of like an open organization centered around the Latinx community. Uh, I'll also just go ahead and put in on the chat for those who don't really know too much about us yet, uh, our membership form so that they can go ahead and get these resources that you'll be listing throughout the event and possibly your contact information or Cornell Law Admissions Office email and a recording of this event also. And I'll go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started with our first, uh, we'll go ahead and do about 30 minutes of our pre-scripted questions that we selected for you. And then if students had any specific questions afterwards, we'll go ahead and open the floor up to anyone and do an open submission. So our first question is sort of a social climate question about uh, Cornell Law School. How would you characterize or um, characterize or categorize the social climate and students at your particular school? Um, so, so Cornell is a pretty small school in comparison to a lot of the other law schools. Um, that was a big factor in my decision to come here. My, I went to undergrad in upstate New York also, um, Hamilton College, which is a small liberal arts college. And um, it was very small. I really liked that. I got to know my professors really well, the students really well. Obviously, sometimes it can feel small for that reason. So I think like, you know, depending on what you're looking for, if you want it to be like in a big city, this probably isn't it. But I'm from a big city and I actually really love Ithaca. It's really, really beautiful. I was a little nervous to come back to upstate New York because it's so cold. Um, but it's been a really great experience. Um, like I said, it's because it's so small, you really get to know everyone and it's not like a commuter school. Like everyone lives here. And so everyone is just here. So you really get to know everyone. You know, I think if like, I don't know, I was thinking about DC for a while or 
you know, another city. And I think just hearing from people I know who go to school there, it's a little bit of a different vibe. Um, so again, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, I really like it for that reason. And I'm just rambling now. So <laughs> I don't know if that answered the social climate question. Um, no, yeah, it, it definitely did. It gave a, a more holistic view. Uh, sometimes law schools in general just can be pretty um, prestigious, maybe gate kept a little bit from certain communities. So it's good to know that there is a more worldly approach even at Cornell. Uh, our next question is, what does diversity mean at your law school? Uh, what is the diversity of your law school's faculty members specifically, if you're able to uh, add to that? Yeah, um, so I was trying to get some numbers, but um, I didn't get numbers. But I think, you know, throughout the law school, there's a lot of diversity. Of, Cornell is a majority minority, what is it, majority minority campus. So the majority of students are minorities. Um, that being said, it is still like a lot of law schools, um, not super diverse. And so in terms of like faculty, uh, even like, you know, I well, I think in our administration, that's a little bit different. But uh, for example, like our dean who he just actually left, he was like the first Latino dean um, for, for one of the top schools, I think. So that was a pretty big deal, you know, like when he first came and he, he was here for a while. Um, so I think that really helped, like his outlook really helped to bring a more diverse perspective to Cornell. Um, and I think, you know, like I'm actually taking a class with a Latino professor who they just hired. So while it's not perfect, um, and I think that's just across the board um, in all law schools, they do make an effort to try to bring in more diverse professors, more, you know, professors of color, more women, more, uh, you know, just across the board, diverse professors. Um, so I think they try to do a really good job of that. Great, thank you. Uh, so now moving on to more of the school specific programs, if you're able to talk about um, any summer programs you might recommend for students uh, who are applying to law school or maybe in their ju junior year or senior year um, and, and any programs or pipeline programs that you can think of. Yeah, so I wasn't even thinking about graduate school when I was in college. So this is great. Like you guys are, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, I think you're many steps ahead. So I personally was just like interning at different places, nothing to do with law. So even if you were like, I don't, you know, I, it's not like, I don't know. I think unless you're applying straight through, it's okay to not necessarily do something in the law. I think even it could add to your applications, your interviews, you know, just to talk about something else. But that being said, there are a lot of really great programs. I am thinking of one, it's called SEO Fellows. Um, I don't know at what point, I think that might be when you, I'm not 100% sure. I know a lot of students here have done it and students in law, so that I have, I don't know what it is, uh, like the specifics, but I know that is a good program. I think that's once you're in law school though. Um, but I would recommend like, if you are thinking of it, you can always try interning somewhere like legal aid. That's a really great, great option. What I did that year was an AmeriCorps position. So I know they have like short-term positions as well. Um, or trying to work for like a judge could be really interesting to see the law from that end, or even like a nonprofit, like in their legal sort of like practice. Um, so really, I would say just like choose, you know, what interests you generally, like it doesn't have to be just the law and then you have to you feel like you have to go one way um and then i'm trying to think of other like specific programs i can maybe get back to you on that because i'm again yeah, i'm like you <laughs> yeah uh, any and if any links um that you find just let us know and then like i said when we finish this meeting we'll go ahead and send the whole list with the recording and contact information to uh the other members okay. uh so if you also know of any other programs specifically for the Latinx and Hispanic students uh, to help them navigate through law school, uh, both before entering the law school and also being accepted as a student at Cornell Law? Um, sorry, can you, uh, can you repeat that question? I think I have it here. Uh, so you're asking at Cor oh, 
I, I, I wouldn't put it in the chat just because it is, okay. a big <laughs> but uh, any programs uh, specifically for the Hispanic Latinx community students to help them get into uh, Cornell Law and then maybe even being there, what programs uh, would be very helpful uh, in your opinion? Okay, yeah. Um, so we do have like a lot of different mentorship programs for students who are like sort of like a pre-law group that you guys have. So it could be something that you could always talk to admissions about creating. Um, I know we do one for like the Cornell students at the undergrad here. Um, so last year when I was a 1L, I would mentor two students who one was like a, maybe a freshman or sophomore. And then the other one, he was a senior. Um, so just kind of like giving them tips. Um, that was like a more structured program. But also like I've had just throughout this, even this fall, um, students who reach out to like admissions who want to talk to us and like, we're always happy to talk to anyone. I'm also always happy to talk to anyone like specific about Cornell, specific about like any school because I also apply to a lot of schools. So I'm always happy to help any student, um, you know, who's navigating that. I know when I was going through the process, it was like, I was just like Googling like how to apply <laughs> to law school, <laughs> like on like Reddit and like, I, you know, I, it just, it is a, you know, it can be very difficult and I think, just trying to find like mentors or, you know, reaching out, like, again, like I said, I know, I know Cornell at least is really good with like help, you know, matching you with someone. Um, I spoke to someone actually maybe at UC, maybe it was another California school, but um, yeah, so they have that sort of thing. And then once you're at Cornell, um, well, I guess once you're accepted, we like right now I'm sending to the students who are accepted as like the president of law sites on like welcome letters, you know, sort of just introducing them to, well, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Congratulating them um, on their acceptance and then just sort of giving them like an overview of what LASA does. Um, you know, like we, for example, at Cornell, we do like a boot camp for the 1Ls where we like have, it's just like a weekend of like networking. I won't, I will maybe get into that later, but um, so I just kind of tell them like our programming, what we do and tell them like, you know, feel free to reach out. I think that's like, before you get accepted, there's a lot of like panels kind of thing that, and, and the letter. And then after being accepted, um, I think like LALSA really is, was the it, most like support that I got. Um, when you are part of a student organization at Cornell, every student organization has like a mentorship program. So a 1L will get paired with a 2L or a 3L. And like, last year I was like texting my mentors like where are the outlets in the library <laughs> like what classes should I not take and like like literally they like they saved me like they really helped me throughout the whole thing and that's why like I was saying about Cornell being so small it really is for me the students um who have like made it really special because everyone's just like so willing to help. It's so small, you you, know, you can't not, you know, like no one here is like mean because then everyone would know. So like, I don't know, I really appreciate that about um, the students. And then also specifically, like I said, my mentors are really helpful in that regard. Awesome. Uh, our, we do have a question submitted. Um, the question was, are you allowed to have a job while in law school? If so, is it difficult to keep up with school and work and have that part-time? I think just because you were talking about uh, the programs that you were doing, the internships that you were doing. Yeah, so before, a couple of years ago, you, like the ABA banned you working, so you couldn't work 1L. I think they've, they've gotten rid of that, so you, you technically could. I worked throughout undergrad and like worked any second I could because I had to and I like one hour I was just like I need to do well it was so busy like it was so I couldn't even I, mean, I had some friends here that worked and like it was just very hard I think your first year especially because your grades are so important um, because you are applying if you're going into the private law firm route you'll be applying to firms like after your one L so you know I think to the extent that like you could, I mean, I know that like, that's not possible for everyone and like loans are not, like that's not an ideal situation. Um, so I, I think it is doable. And especially like, if you could find maybe jobs within the law school, then maybe it could be doable. I, again, I couldn't have, like it was just crazy for me. Um, but that being said, like 2L and 3L definitely um, is when a lot of people then start 
working more. And like I said, uh, there's a lot of jobs like within the law school, like the library. Um, some of my friends are like RAs here, so they get free housing and even like RAs for some of like the sorority and frat houses. So they get like stipends for food. So that's a great setup. Um, and so there are definitely a lot, there's a lot in like here too, some people work at like restaurants, the bars. So there's a lot of different options. It's definitely doable, especially in your second and third year when you can like breathe a little bit more and like make your schedule more how you wanna make it. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, our next question was what career services are offered to students and are there any clinical uh, opportunities offered? Or if you could talk about any uh, clinics that are offered that you think are especially should, should be highlighted. Yes, this is a lot. Okay, I'll try to go fast. I talk a lot. Um, career services. So, like I was saying about our boot camp, um, so LALSA and then BALSA, which is the Black American Law Student Association, and then NALSA, the Native American Law Student Association, every year, and we're in our 10th anniversary of doing it, and we're planning right now for it. Um, in March, like I was saying, we do a boot camp where we have our alum are like very involved. I meet with them once a month, the Latino lawyers of Cornell, they're great. They're super involved with us, um, you know, in terms of like networking or like anything you want, like they will find someone for you to talk to or, you know, what, you know, whatever it is, get an interview. We had a lot of people who got interviews that way. So that is a great, I loved bootcamp. You like, there's panels where they have like, you talk about clerkships, like if that's something, if you wanna work for like a judge, if you want to do like public interest, you know, geared towards like students who want to do that. Um, even like programs on like loan forgiveness. So that weekend is like really, because one else so busy, like there are things throughout the semester as well that we do hold, um, that career services will hold. And then like also, we also host our own sort of programming. I think boot camp is like a really good like time um, that everyone always enjoys. And like I said, alumni come back and they'll speak on panels. And then to your second question, clinics. So Cornell has a lot of clinics. Um, we actually, I think we're one of the only schools that has a 1L clinic, which is really cool. Um, it's a 1L immigration clinic and it's pretty selective. Like I think they take about six or seven, six students every year. Um, so if you have like some kind of background, like if you speak, like language skills they take into account um, if you have like an immigration sort of any work in that area. But anyway, this, it's a great clinic that I think it's a really great opportunity for one else to get involved your first year, you're just like doing so many like doctrinal courses and it's like torts and it's like heavy. So it's really like the opportunity to, it's an opportunity to like apply what you've been learning in class. So it's 1L and then 2L and 3L there's like the rest of the clinics are available to you. So I right now am in the death penalty clinic um, where we work with, you know, our clients are people who are on death row and we're trying to get them off of it. So I've been working on a case um, with someone who's in Texas right now and we're just like working on his actual state petition. And so our professor who I actually had for 1L, she's like, you know, she's like our kind of supervisor and it's, it's, fun, it's you know, it's not, it's, it's a good experience to like be able to apply, like I said, the skills that you learn and know that it's like so many times in law school you're talking about like hypotheticals and like you're writing like fake memos and you're like, why? <laughs> like there's real stuff happening. Um, and so it really is like, you know, you, you finally get to all and three all and you're like, okay, like I, I understand like what the process was for and like, it's really worth it. So anyway, there are a lot of clinics. Um, we have like a labor law clinic, if you're interested in labor law, um, my roommates in that one. There's immigration, there's like appellate clinics. If you wanna do like more writing and like briefs and like oral argument type of things, you have like attendance advocacy clinic, uh, farm workers. Um, there's like a one, there's the oh, next semester, there's starting like an Afghanistan refugee um, clinic because of like the demands um, that, like IRAP, like I was saying, our like international refugee. There's just a lot of demand. So a professor is like, I'm gonna start this clinic. So there's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more, but there's kind of everything for anyone I would say. And it's not really hard also to get into a clinic. Like you do apply, but every like everyone pretty much gets into like their one or second choice. And if you don't, like the next semester you would get into your first choice. So that's nice that it's a small school for that reason. 
Awesome. Yeah, I'm actually very interested in doing appellate uh, work. So it's very great to hear that there's already a clinic already in place for, for that specifically. Uh, our next question that was submitted is, uh, what type of academic support does your institution provide to students? Um, I think this is partially with, you were saying, with the mentorship program, but I guess if there's any other uh, supplemental support that they can reach out to, get an assigned tutor. I've heard some schools have that program. I don't know if maybe Cornell has something like that also. Yeah, yeah, so we do have that. We have like a writing program, although your first year, I, I don't think you, I don't think you can use it your first year. I'd have to check on how it works, but there, there are centers for that, especially like um, a lot of the LLM students too. There's like a office also de devoted to um, writing and like speed, you know, like uh, oral presentations that you can go and like people will um, help you with that. And academic support. I mean, I think like, you know, we'll have, like there is someone who is dedicated in uh, the admissions office or I guess that'd be career. I don't know what office they're a part of, but she's like sort of the general like academic chair. And so she'll have, there are maybe like six students who are like TAs for that. And so throughout the year, they'll have like office hours. They'll send like, she sends like weekly emails, like, hey, it's your second week. Yay. <laughs> like, you know, start thinking about this. Like you should be, you know, thinking about like, or like, don't stress about this yet. So it is like, I remember seeing those emails and being like, okay, like she kind of tells you like where you are and like, they're always, you know, willing to meet with students. Like I said, there's a lot of TAs who do that. Um, and then they do have like throughout the year presentations where like she, you know, went through like all of our like library resources, all the study aids that are online that I use a lot of. Um, so there are like resources like that as well that are available to students and they'll like, you know, run you through all of that, especially your one all year when you're kind of like figuring it out. I don't know if that was. Yeah, yeah, no, it's <laughs> good, good to know that there are those uh, programs in there already and there's already a person who's kind of in charge of making sure to check up on, on students. I think there was just a feeling of disconnect possibly. There's like a big jump between going from undergraduate work into law, law school, uh, just a kind of mystery cloud around what that actually means to study law at a law school. Um, the next question was, how important are law journals or law reviews and how are students selected for law journals and law reviews? Right, so I forgot to mention that. Um, I'm on law review. Um, so you, Cornell has three journals, four journals, but one is like, uh, you like get paid to be on it. Um, but so there's four. Uh, there's law review, there's the journal of public policy, and then there's the international law journal. Um, at the end of your 1L year, and I think for most schools, it's pretty much the same, just like the competition's a little bit different. They call it a writing competition or they call it like a write-on um, where you after, like literally right after finals, which is not fun, um, but some schools do it differently. Like I know Georgetown, they did it like you could do it within a month. You know, you just have to find like a specific time where you do your exam, your competition. Um, so we had like a two, maybe three week period that you could choose like your it was like 72 hours. Anyway, it's the end of 1L year. You do, at least at Cornell, you do like an edit test um, where you're just like blue book editing, which is kind of like our, what is it called? Like Chicago manual or like MLA, like, yeah, like the format that we use, the uh, legal, the one that everyone uses, um, legal citation format. So you like blue book an article and then the second part of the test is you, um, are your reading notes that student, you know, your reading notes that law review has had or the journals have had, and then you're writing like a summary about it. So it's like a couple, maybe like, I forgot how many, 2000 words, I forgot how many words, but so you do that. And then Cor at least Cornell um, that I can speak to, um, they have been, all of the journals across the board have been really pushing for more diversity on our um, journals and how, because right now, like the numbers are very skewed and like, again, diversity, like there are so many issues of diversity in the legal field in law schools. So then I, of course in journals. So um, I'm actually on the diversity committee of on law review. And so the Cornell introduced um, two years ago, I think, yeah, when, like during COVID where they decided they all voted to lower 
because they take into account like your GPA from your 1L, uh, and then they take into account like your a diversity statement that you can submit. And they won like a couple of years ago out of the diversity statement. And then the two years ago, they decided to weigh the grades less and then the diversity statement more. And they have like different ways that you could grade on to law review. So it's a lot of like changes, but for good. Um, that I think has been like really successful and they're just trying out this new grading policy and we actually have a meeting on Saturday to see how we can like if it like how it's been going and like how we can make it better even so so yeah uh how important is it um I think it depends also on like what you want to do I think you always hear like do a journal I mean if you're doing like purely transactional law like you want to do m a like contracts like i it maybe not might not be necessary because you're not like always doing that kind of work. And I know a lot of my friends are like that. It's a lot of it's a lot of work during the year, so they just didn't want to do it. Um, it is a great experience, like especially if you want to do litigation. Um, if you like writing and want to improve your writing skills, you're constantly reading, editing, um, and like for clerkships too, which will come later. Um, it is very helpful for that reason. Like judges really like students, most judges, not all, like students who have done some kind of journal. So that was also helpful. Uh, that was also a particularly uh, big question of mine too. I'm on two journals and I've just kind of thought how important would it be to continue this because it is a lot of work and I just don't, you know, it, it's good to know that it will be helpful at least for getting clerkships, uh, working with judges. So. Uh, the next question that was submitted was if you could describe the physical location of your school. Is it in a big city? It is, well, it's in a small city, but how does that impact versus being in a, in a bigger city? Yeah, so like I said, like I am from Miami. Um, when I was an undergrad, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> where am I? Um, it was very cold, very small. I was like culture shock. It was wild. Um, so coming back, I was like, I was a little bit nervous, even though I've been like four years and I had been working and I was just like, it was different, um, but I was still nervous, but I, I loved Ithaca. Like, I don't know if my <laughs> undergrad was so small, like in a tiny, tiny town that this is like a city to me. I'm like, this is a, this is a Starbucks here. It's like a Target, like, oh my God. Um, but no, I think it's great. Like it's, it's beautiful in the fall and in the summer when well, the summer's hot, but it's beautiful. Like um, there's a lot of gorges and like hikes that you can do. So in like the fall, my roommate and I who were roomed together last year, we like, we every like weekend, you know, we're trying to do something outside. It's so nice. There's like vineyards and wineries and like different breweries and all these restaurants. Like I just wasn't expecting Ithaca to be so like, I don't know, like more of a city than I thought. Um, so it's great. I, like I said, I mean, also going back to that, it gets very cold, like very cold. Um, so I have a sun lamp <laughs> for the winter. <laughs> um, and like, I don't know, you're so busy in school that like, I kind of, I kind of thought that way in undergrad too. Like, you're just like studying a lot. Um, so I actually like it because I get very distracted. And I know if I was like, like my, my partner's in DC. And for a while I was like, do I go to DC? Do I go to Cornell and I ended up coming here. Um, but I know if I had been there, like I would have just been very distracted. Obviously, I think like that depends on everyone, like being close to family, being close to like your support network is also very important. Law school is hard. 2L is hard. I thought it was done after 1L, but it's not. It's just like very busy. Um, and so it is important to like if you know that that's something that's very important to you maybe like going you know somewhere super far away might not be a good idea um but it, like again like I said it is nice that everyone's here because it really feels like a community you know people like like I'm I'll see friends like this weekend like no one's like you know going anywhere else so it is just nice that like feeling of community that everyone's kind of kind of here um so yeah uh, yeah, so we're from California. We're basically <laughs> the same temperature, so it, it's good to hear that perspective. <laughs> uh, so the next question was, if you had to recommend an LSTAT route, um, this student is applying, hopefully. Um, she is a classmate of mine. She asked, she's hoping to do an accelerated program. 
Um, and so she's wondering when she should last the LSAT, if you could recommend um, either, maybe just explain your journey and applying to law school. And if you had to do it again, what route you would best do it for uh, scheduling at least. She's doing an accelerated. She's thinking about, I think, apply. I think she means, um, look at her question. I, th I think what she was trying to ask is to apply for early decision, uh, like okay. a binding. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So lucky for everyone, I applied to law school twice. So <laughs> I had two different experiences. Um, so I can, I guess, talk a little bit about that. But so I ended up taking the LSAT three times over the course of three years. Um, I would say the most common I've heard is like one, two times, maybe three. Um, I, like I said, wasn't sure. I wasn't thinking about grad school. I was like, let me just take the LSAT and see what happens, which like, don't do that. <laughs> it goes on your like score. <laughs> um, you know, they see all of your scores. Um, and so, so yeah, so the first time I kind of just didn't really prepare much. I just, got really good at like one section, which is the game section. And I was like, oh, I'll just see what happens. Um, because I didn't even know if I wanted to apply. And then I ended up applying the first cycle very late, I would say it was like end of January, early February, which if you have a really good score and a really good GPA, I wouldn't say that's late. Like schools will still take, I mean, unfortunately, like it's a numbers game, which is like, I like terrible um like I don't you know I think there should be like and I think schools are trying to you know uh obviously look at other factors um but at the end of the day especially with like scholarships like it is going to be a very like numbers heavy game um so I applied I would say late with an okay score um I like letters of recommendation you know all of that and it was, I, so I got like waitlist. I got into some schools, like I was thinking about like American University uh, for a second, like Boston College. Like I was like, but I didn't really have a lot of scholarships and I was waitlisted at a lot of places. And I thought about it and I was like, I'm ready to go. I want to go now. Um, there's no rush, I would say. Um, I'm really glad I took my time. I know it's like a different path for everyone, but it really, I ended up deciding like, okay, I'm going to do this for real. Like I'm going to like, you know, study, take a course. Oh, I forgot to mention that one point I took it again, um, but I was like, again, like moving, like not taking, I was like doing my own studying. So I ended up taking it the third time. I did a course. Um, I did the blueprint course, which at first I did like their online course, which was really helpful. But then I ended up doing an in-person class, which was more helpful for me because I was working at the time and it was hard to find time to study. Like it was like six and I was like, I'm gonna go home and sleep, <laughs> like eat and then like not study. So I think you have to like, I think what I always tell people is like, take the LSAT just like once. My friend just took it the other day and he like did really well. And I was like, don't, don't study, like don't study, just like apply. Um, that was not the case for me. Um, like having a structured course was really great. There are, and, and again, like there are a lot of courses, um, Seven Sage I thought was really great for games. Like that's how I learned how to like all the games I was getting like minus zero or, you know, none wrong because of them. Um, and then I think what else? Kaplan, I think is a good one. I really like Blueprint um, if people wanted to ask me more about that. But um, I would say take an exam, see where you are. And then you can see like, just like, how the exam even is and if you feel like it's something you can study on your own for because maybe you don't have to spend money to even take a course like they're expensive and that's what I tried doing in the beginning like studying by myself um which was okay but I did need more structure so all that to say I was gonna say one more thing um the course oh LSAC has fee waivers um for applying to law school for like your application fee. So if you think you qualify, I would apply to that. They denied me the first time. And I was like, no, like I, I really don't <laughs> like, and I just had to show them like more and they were like, okay. Um, so if that happens, you can also <laughs> appeal. Um, I was like, I don't know, wait, I don't know. Um, so, uh, so that's great because aside from getting the application fee waived, you get, you have to send like your scores to all the schools which is another fee. 
and they give you four of those, which is nice. It's like $35 every time. And then you, they also give you like free resources. And then when you're applying, when you, if you wanted to take a course, a lot of these courses will take that LSAT fee waiver into account. So like I got my course, it was like half off, which was still a lot of money. But for me, it was like, if I could, and I was very lucky, I was working at the time. So I was like, okay, like I'm very fortunate. I can like pay for this. And it's, I know it's a good investment because like, you know, I think it's like 800, which was half, which I think it's like usually 1600. I don't even know how much it is, maybe more. Um, it's like a small amount, it's not a small amount for like the scholarships that you would get if you got a high score. Like that's how I would see it. You know, like $800 now might be like thousands of dollars later, which ended up being like really good. Like I did a lot way better on um, the third time and they take into account your highest score. Most schools, like they don't average it, um, but they see all your scores. So yeah. So the LSAT is like not that fun, um, but if you're like in school too and you can kind of work it into your study schedule, I think that's really good, like, or like your summer schedule, but definitely give yourself enough time to study for it. People say like, oh, three months. I think everyone studies at a different pace, um, three months maybe for some people, maybe one day for like my friend who just took it. Um, for me, it was like I was working, so it was more like a five month like six month process because I was like not that you know you're doing like two hours kind of like here and there so all that to say like take into account your schedule what you need and also I'm always happy to talk like more specifics about like strategies with anyone um if they wanted to talk about that awesome yeah um thank you that actually does kind of segue into a nice closing if we welcome if you'd like to drop your uh contact information